Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here with you as we are starting a new series in the truth of God's Word. We'll be beginning in Romans chapter 6. Uh, and we're just going to work our way through this this chapter in the book of Romans and allow the Lord to teach us how to have victory over the dominion of sin in our hearts and lives. And, and it's simply by trusting and believing in what Christ did for us in His sacrifice at the cross, which, which causes us by faith to get up and live our lives free from the dominion of sin. But there, this is something that we've got to grow in and experience daily as we're learning by faith to trust in that nail-scarred hand of Jesus. And if you would, grab your Bibles. And I got my son here with me today, uh, Jaden, and we, we're just going to gather together and we're going to begin to learn the Word of God in its righteous context. And that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified because that alone is the only thing that can set us free from sin. But as you're getting your Bibles and turning to Romans chapter 6, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time that you've given us, Lord God, to be able to come before you, Lord God, and and open up your word and, and just find you that hidden treasure, Lord God, that we need to live our lives by daily, to be focused completely upon you as you've given us the help, Lord, the strength, and the the... Uh, the the outstretched hand, the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us, Lord, to walk in that victory and to see you, Lord, to grow in your grace, Lord, each and every day. And it's all by faith in your sacrifice at Calvary. And we're asking, Lord, for your help during this session through this Bible teaching, Lord God, that you would bless it every time we gather together, Lord God, and be able to walk in your victory as we take something from it to be able to apply to our hearts and lives, Lord God, because we're simply believing that through faith in your sacrifice is the only way to grow in the grace and knowledge of God so our understanding would no longer have to be darkened, Lord, because you made the way, you paid the price, you gave your life, you hung on the old rugged cross, you said it is finished. And Lord God, you did everything that we need there so we could get up by faith and every, every day live our lives in that victory. And we just thank you, Lord, for the time that you've given us, Lord, to be able to share your word in its righteous context, in the truth. And that is through Jesus Christ and what he did for us at Calvary. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and glory. And in Jesus' holy name we pray. In Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? And the way that I've broken this down is we shall not remain in a condition to where sin is dominating our lives. And the reason why is because we are dead to sin by having died with Christ. The reason why we continue to live our lives in sin is because we're trying through our own strengths and abilities to overcome what Christ has already overcame for us on Calvary's cross. But if we don't look exclusively to the sacrifice day after day and learn to become focused and a growing a determination not to know anything else among anyone else, then, then what Christ did for us there at Calvary will not be experienced in our lives. And we can't grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ because we're trying to address our walk with God in an improper way. You see, it's only as we come back to the Word of God, which when, when coming back to the Word is coming back to the sacrifice. Because in John 1, 1, 14 and 29, it says, in, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the next day, John sees Jesus coming and says, Behold, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You don't get victory over sin without going to the cross and looking to what Jesus Christ did to overcome sin. It's only by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us at Calvary's cross. And when our faith is there and there alone, then the Holy Spirit is allowed to work in our hearts and lives so we don't have to remain in a condition to where we are dominated by the sin nature because Christ atoned for all sin. He didn't just die for single acts of sin, but he died for the very nature of sin that we was all born in. And if we will look at exclusively to the blood of Jesus Christ and repent of everything that we're trusting in, in self, in self-help programs, in everything that we got going on under the sun, except for faith in Christ and the cross, and come back to the exclusivity of what Jesus did for us at Calvary, then we can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But there's no other way to grow in the grace of God. And I know many will mock this because of ignorance, a lack of understanding of not knowing. So therefore they throw it to the side. I got my religion that my mama or my daddy or my grandma taught me and I live by it all my life. But I've never come to the saving knowledge that there was a man who loved me enough to give his life for me on Calvary's cross so that by faith I could be set free from sin. You see, we don't have to be bound by it anymore. We don't have to live our lives consumed by it any longer, by the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Jesus Christ atoned for all sin on Calvary's cross, and it's our faith in His sacrifice. I said it's our faith in His sacrifice that atoned for all sin that will help us to get up every day and grow in grace. But outside of faith in the blood of the Lamb alone, it's not the grace of God that we're growing in. It's what we'll be growing away from. So what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin, live any longer therein. So we shall not remain in a condition where sin is dominating our lives. And the reason why is because we are dead to sin by having died with Christ. In verses 6 through 8, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, and that word henceforth, it means from now on. From this day forward, when I come to the knowledge, to the understanding that everything I need is in Christ and what He did for me at Calvary, I should no longer serve sin. For He who is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. You see, we've got to know something. We've got to know that our old man is crucified with Christ. But not just anything will do. That's where the church is, most of the church is at today. Is, is they think anything and everything under the sun is of the Lord and God's working in it all. But not all roads lead to God. I'm sorry they don't. There's only one way that God has given us and that way is a narrow way. And there's only a few that's going to be found on it. And the reason why is because most ain't going to believe it. Because most want to cling to everything that's not right. You see, there's a way that seems right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That's Proverbs 14 and 12. It's in another area in Proverbs 2. But it says this in Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, you're not going to have life to be able to get up and live free from sin, from the dominion of sin, without trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Because everything that is not faith in the cross is the wages of sin, which brings separation from God. And it's all because we're trusting in what we think is right. But what we think is right is not right. You see, we've got to lay all of our thoughts, all of our opinions, everything that we are to the side because we was born with a deceitful and desperately wicked heart. 
But it's only as we trust, it's only as we trust in the blood of Jesus Christ and allow God to bring us to an understanding of His Word that we can grow in the victory that He has provided for us all on Calvary's cross. So no, we should not remain in a condition to where sin is dominating our lives when Jesus Christ paid the price for us to set us free from our sins and transgressions and to live that way each and every day. We should continue to believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You see, when I'm believing in Him, I'm believing in what works to set me free from sin, to cause me to get up in the righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit and find the victory that Christ won for me on Calvary's hill every day. You see, I don't have to be focused on my purpose-driven books. I don't have to be looking to celebrate recovery to try to overcome addiction because I took one step to the foot of the cross and laid them all down. It was on the, the hill called Golgotha. You see, what Jesus did in His death was atoned for all sin, so every addiction, every bondage, every wrong direction in our hearts and lives could be straightened and we could be free from it all. But you see, that's going to come with a, I've got to learn, i got to understand, i got to know, i got to seek Him, i got to find Him, i got to know what Jesus did for me on that old rugged cross so the blood that He provided there can wash me, can cleanse me, not only once but every day every day as I come back to what Jesus did for me at Calvary then I can take hold of that which is right and the Bible says the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth the truth is a man named Jesus Christ and he's only our truth through what He's done for us at Calvary's cross when we believe. But you see, believing is receiving of the very work that Christ carried out for us at Calvary and knowing that our old man is crucified with Him and knowing that that's where He destroyed the body of sin. He made the way for us to be separated from sin. Yes, we are still in a fleshly body, and yes, we still have a sin nature in our lives. But as long as we will keep our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and His sacrifice, that sin will lie dormant in our lives, powerless, because it's been destroyed by the one that we're learning to trust and confide in, and that is Jesus Christ. That from now on, that we know this, we should no longer serve sin, and the reason why is because he who is dead is freed from sin. You see, we've been freed from sin to live for God, to live by faith in the blood of the Lamb. But we've got to know that our old man is crucified with him. We've got to know that our old man is laid to rest in the baptism of his death to be remembered no more. We've got to know that all of our sins are gone and forgotten to be remembered no more. If you would, turn with me to Psalms chapter 103. And we'll be reading through verses uh, 11 through 18. It says, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them who fear Him. His mercy is only found in the fear of God. And the proper biblical understanding and knowledge of fear is the value of God's worth. Because the Bible says, What is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world? and lose his own soul. What are we valuing the most in our lives? Is it the fear of God? You see, in the fear of God is the beginning of understanding. We're not going to understand anything that's in these Scriptures unless the Lord is revealing to them to us who He's speaking by, and that's His Son. And as we've already 
come to the understanding that in the beginning was the Word. And what that Word came to do was to take away the sin of the world. You see, the problem in the world today is sin. The problem in the church today is sin. The problem in the own individual's heart today is sin. But the only way that sin is no longer going to be a problem in our lives anymore is as we learn every day. I mean, this has got to be, I've got to, it's kind of like that me and my boys talking about the pearl of great price last night. When the man went into a field and he found the pearl of great price, he went and sold everything that he had and bought that field. We've got to sell out to the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's worth it. Because it's worth it to no longer be dominated by sin and to know one day we're going to see Jesus as he is and we're going to be just like him. It's worth it because we're in a relationship, in a covenant with the God <laughs> who created the heavens and the earth so we could enjoy it with Him. But without faith in His sacrifice, it's to be without we can't do anything without the Lord. We need the Lord in every area of our lives. And in verse 11 it says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. And get back to the point of my notes. Uh, all of our sins are are gone and forgotten to be remembered no more. You see, God's love for us was so great that as long as we're trusting in the sacrifice, because if we're not trusting in the sacrifice, sin is being strengthened in our lives and no sins are being developed. But when we are trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, all of our sins are gone. That means we're justified. We're declared not guilty. We're no longer underneath the condemnatory sentence of death. Christ has abolished all of that in His death for us all at Calvary's cross. But it takes... Let me say this right. It, it takes, I want to say, an active faith. A working faith. Evidenced in the blood of Jesus Christ, in His sacrifice, knowing that that's where life comes from. Knowing that out of death, out of His death, the life of God is going to flow into our hearts and lives and He's going to continue to set those who believe free from all sin. We just got to hold to it. The anchor will hold as long as we keep holding to that which anchors our faith. And that's the sacrifice of Jesus Christ which brings us within the veil. You see, it's the blood of Jesus that opened the doors, the blood that made the way. In verse 13, it says, Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them who fear Him. Excuse me. For He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more, but the mercy of the Lord. Let me read that again. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them who fear Him. And His righteousness 
unto children's children to such hear me now to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them it's only as we keep our faith in the sacrifice of Christ daily to where we can continue in his word free from all sin that's that's what it is to keep his covenant that's what it is to remember his commandments and do them you see the lord brings everything that we need back to our remembrance so we could get up and live our lives in the victory that He has provided for us through faith in His sacrifice every day. But if we're not looking exclusively to what Jesus did for us at the cross, then we're not continuing in that which has the power to not only save us, but to keep us living our lives saved by faith every day. That's why it's important to grow in a determination. But you got to sell out. You gotta sell out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't just come in and say I tried it and it doesn't work. No, because if it's not working in your life, it's because you're not looking to what did work. Because you have yet to sell out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when we sell out to it, the Holy Spirit begins to work in our hearts and lives setting us free from the dominion of sin and and bringing us into a proper understanding of exactly what has taken place from the moment that we believe that Jesus did everything that we need there. You see, it's growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's growing in an understanding that what God did in in His Son was enough. So we no longer have to be blinded by the veil because our our lives are still underneath the law of sin and death to where we're trusting in anything and everything that comes along. You see, that's not the will of God for us. God wasn't confused. God was not confused. He had a plan. That plan was foreordained before the foundation of this world. It's been manifested in these last times for you and me, but only those who believe will walk in experience of what God had planned for humanity before Adam and Eve ever sinned and fell in the Garden of Eden and He had to rush in with a promise because of His love for us. God wasn't confused. It's man who's confused. But God will clear up the confusion when man repents of his works, of his sins, of his self-help programs, and comes and takes hold of the blood of Jesus Christ and says, I need to follow that because that's what's true. That's what's real. That's what's going to help me to lay these heavy burdens aside. That's what's going to break the bondages of sin and addiction out of my heart and life. You see, you no longer have to be bound by substance abuse. You no longer have to live your life condemned by sin anymore. You no longer have to live your life underneath the judgment that God poured out upon all the world and condemned all to die because of sin. But we can receive newness of life by simply trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That Maybe I'm not saying it exactly right in certain parts because I'm still growing in my understanding. But one thing I know is the Lord's here and He's leading and guiding this and He will show us His will and way and direct our paths in that path of righteousness every day as long as we keep our faith and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. But it's the blood alone that sets us free from all sin. It's what Jesus did at Calvary. And as long as we're trusting in that victory, and no, I didn't come here today to take up an offering. I came here to give the words of eternal life. I came here to give the victory 
of Jesus Christ because that's what he's called me to do. I came here to preach the gospel, to point souls. But I can tell you this. You ain't give nothing to God until you gave it into a church that's preaching the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified for everything that we need. Because that's the answer. And until we give into that which is right, all we're doing is throwing our money in a sinking boat. We don't have to be deceived anymore. We don't have to live a life of lies and deceit anymore. Jesus Christ has won our victory. And as long as we'll trust in the victory that He's won for us at Calvary, then we'll get up every day free from the dominion of sin. And, and that's what the Lord is leading me into as we're beginning to break these Scriptures down in Romans chapter 6. And it is for the, the hearers out there too as, as that's what it takes for faith to come. And I know that the faith of the Son of God has has risen up in some hearts here today. And I'm believing for more in the days ahead. I'm believing for more souls and for more lives to be changed. Time is short. Jesus is coming back. We ain't got time to play games. We ain't got time to be in no rat race because we ain't in no competition with nobody. We're here to fight the good fight of faith to lay hold on eternal life to where we have professed a good profession before many witnesses. We're going to meet Jesus. And it ain't going to be too long from now. And God is preparing His people. And the only way that we can be prepared to meet Him. And that's through faith in the sacrifice which washes and cleanses and sets us free from the enemy that's within our own selves, our own hearts and lives. Now thank you for tuning in and be looking for these broadcasts every Saturday morning. Well, I say every Saturday morning. Every Saturday morning that I'm able to, I'm going to try to start... Lord willing, start doing these every Saturday. And if something comes up, you know that's life. Things happen. But there will be a broadcast put out there every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Now, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, keep your eyes upon Jesus and stay determined not to know anything among anyone. Because there ain't nothing else to know except Christ and Him crucified to meet all our needs. And I thank you for tuning in.